Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. It's a known fact that people who are in the narcissistic pattern must establish themselves as superior. They just think of themselves in a little bit too lofty of a term, but just that one thought sets up so many other possibilities because if they have to be superior, well, that means that somebody's going to have to play the role of the inferior person, and that's where you come in. Narcissists are users they're exploiters, they're manipulators, and they see you as somebody who uh, can service them. Uh, they see you for your utility. In other words, uh, you know, they're thinking, what is it that you can do for me? And as a result, they have no problems whatsoever in stepping all over your legitimate needs and your desires because you see you're not equal to them. They want you to be a doormat. They want you to be someone they can walk all over, someone they can wipe their feet on, and they have uh, no problems in, in being able to take that role because in their mind, they're special. Uh, when they engage with other individuals, they're thinking, who in front of me here is most likely to cater to my needs or to my uh, preferences or my mandates? Who, who can I push my, uh, my agenda on to? Uh, what is it that you're going to be able to do for me uh, and if you're somebody that I can out argue, all the better. If you're someone that's easily convinced, even better. If you're someone who doesn't enjoy debating, great because I do and I'll out debate anyone. Who in my presence, in their way of thinking, is the most gullible? Who's the most pliable? Who's the one who really likes to be helpful? I'm going to go straight to that person and I'm going to make that individual my doormat. And the, the problem is when a, a narcissist approaches you with this kind of thinking, what they're doing is they're trying to take your very best characteristics, your helpfulness, your kindness, and your willingness, and then use it against you. And then uh, eventually when you protest, it's like, not my problem, it's your problem. Narcissists want you to ignore your needs and to highlight and cater to their needs and so if you're the kind of person that says, I like being helpful, I like being somebody who's tuned in, it's like, I can make this work. And you don't know it yet, but you are going to get walked all over. The starting point that a narcissist has in the way that they engage with you is entitlement. My needs matter, yours don't. Double standards. Uh, when you're with that narcissist, they already want to assign you the role of propping them up they want to assign uh, to you the role of servicing them. You'll notice that they love to be the uh, the object and the recipient of all sorts of nice things. Uh, and then uh, they're not above throwing a little flattery at you from time to time and giving you gifts or uh, paying you compliments as long as you keep coming back to them and servicing them because ultimately uh, their kindness is phony and they're trying to uh, play upon your kindness in such a way where they can exploit that. And then if you ever do get to the point of uh, registering feelings of hurt or disappointment or if it becomes obvious that you've been damaged because of their treatment of you, too bad. You're the loser anyway. That's how they think. And they have no particular desire for you other than what you're going to do for them. You're the doormat. They're going to wipe their feet all over you. Now, it's important for you to understand what they're looking for in the doormat. In other words, what kind of traits appeal most to them uh, that would cause them to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work you over. For example, one of the things we know that they look for is they look for people who have a willingness just to get along. And again, you see, that's one that can be a very healthy characteristic. If you're pliable, if you're flexible, if you're willing to compromise, it's like, good to know. I'm going to work that one all the way as far as I can. 
They, another thing is they like people who have FOMO. You know what FOMO is? The fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. In other words, if you're the kind of person that likes to be included, that wants to be a part of the team, it's like, good, I want you to, I want to include you. And so they'll pull you in and make it seem as though you're going to have all sorts of great things that's going to happen if you hang around with me. But then, of course, in, uh, in your eagerness to be a part of the team, it's like, and I'm going to work this to my advantage as much as I possibly can. In addition, they like people who have weak assertiveness skills. Uh, it, it may be that you'll want to stand up for yourself, but then they can talk you out of it pretty quickly because you're not that pushy or you're not that forceful. It's like, yeah, I'll outforce you any, any day of the week. Also, they like people who will say yes when they really need to say no. Are you that kind of person that sometimes you're no, it can, you can be talked out of that and they can kind of pull you in there. They love it when they know that you're the kind of person who enjoys being a, a servant. Uh, when you really enjoy playing the helpful role, it's like, ooh, I like being served and I like being helped. And so they'll work that for all it's worth. They enjoy it when they realize that you're motivated by a sense of uh, obligation and duty. And it's like, good, you need to be obliged to me and you need to <laughs> apply your duty towards me. And then even more so, they'll play it and they'll prey upon your uh, inclination to be guilt uh, driven or uh, if they can shame you into doing whatever it is they want you to do. If you're the kind of person that can be manipulated that way, it's like, ooh, that's going to really work for me. They like people who are susceptible to the sales pitch, if you know what I mean. For example, they may say, come on, do this with me. And you may say, I don't know about that. But then they can come back with, oh, come on, you can do it. It's not going to hurt. And so you go along to get along. They like people who give them the benefit of the doubt, who are conflict averse. And in the meantime, as you're being groomed and treated in this kind of way where they're going to uh, treat you ultimately like the doormat that they see you as, you're going to have a buildup of all sorts of emotion like resentment or bitterness or suspicion. You're going to eventually learn to not trust these individuals. You're going to have feelings of uncertainty and insecurity around them. You're going to have uh, feelings of betrayal that are going to come uh, towards them. It's like, this person doesn't have my best interest at heart. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I, I do. I do. You're just a doormat. But yeah, I do. That's how it works. Now, I'm hoping that you can see that that's a desire that they have, and I'm hoping you can see and understand what they're looking for. So at the very least, on your side of the equation, you're not going to play the role of their flying monkey or enabler or apologist or useful idiot. All of that is what they want. And instead, I'm hoping you can stay out of all or nothing thinking. And let me give you an idea of what I mean by that. You can look at that narcissist and say, well, they're so dominant. But then you can think, well, I don't want to be a dominant person. So I, I, I just need to go along with people. That, that's the all or nothing thinking. They're, they're counting on you going into that. You can Instead, you can think, you know, they do want to be dominant. And uh, I, it, it's not wrong for me to, I mean, it, it's not helpful for me to, uh, to go in the, the far extreme of being really helpful. Uh, there's, there's a sense of fairness that I'm going to stand for. That's the middle ground that you're going to operate with. And if they don't like it, they don't like it, but uh, I'm not going to buy into there. If you're not this, then you're that. I, I, I'm, I'm more nuanced and, and I'm more insightful than that. Also, it's going to be necessary for you to realize that you know they, they like people who are not assertive or don't uh, put up boundaries. When you do put up boundaries and when you are assertive, it's good for you to realize it's good for them to have the assertiveness. Uh, it's, it's a message that they need to hear when, uh, when you say, I need you to know who I am and I need you to respect my decency. That's a good message. Now, there's not a high likelihood they're going to buy into that, but your message is good and, and it's, it's right and appropriate for you to stand upon that. Keep in mind, if you're with a person who wants just nothing but a utile doormat person that they can just wipe their feet all off of, it's not going to get much better. Somebody that allows themselves to think that way, to elevate their own standing by diminishing you, is someone that just doesn't understand life well at all. They don't see you uh, as a fellow human. You're just a, a tool to be used, and that's a, a sad realization. But nonetheless, it's true. That's part of how narcissists think. So I'm hoping, as you realize, narcissists are not team players. 
They don't like it when you stand up for yourself. In their minds, uh, they, they have to have the, the higher edge over you. I'm hoping you can see that if somebody is going to respect you, it needs to start with you respecting you. The narcissist sees you, at, like I say, as that and that person to be uh, used, period. But as you begin thinking, you know, I, I, I care about me too much that, to allow myself to be anyone's doormat. I am going to stand firmly on who I am. I am going to follow my initiatives. I'm going to stick with my beliefs and my convictions and my values. I'm going to act upon it. And when the narcissist tries to say, get back over here and you're into your assigned role, it's like, nope, that's the role you've assigned me, but that's not the role that I choose for myself. Uh, I'm somebody who wants to be uh, with people who care and who can reciprocate in my good ingredients. I don't need to be around somebody who ultimately is going to be destructive and toxic uh, and just play upon my good ingredients. Hold on to the part of you that is kind and helpful and serving, but then do it in a sense that says, but I'm going to be balanced about it. I'm going to still have my calm firmness and balance is something that a narcissist is not going to maintain. Recognize that, but claim it as your own. And I hope the videos like this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. Knowledge is power, and the more you're aware of how these things play out, then the more you're able to make healthy uh, adjustments along the way. It's called growth, by the way. If you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. Gus and I will keep more videos coming in your direction. And I truly appreciate it when you allow me to be on your path with you. Uh, in addition, it could be that you might have a desire to talk this out with a professional who can help you um, figure out all the uh, nuances and, and wrinkles according to your own uh, unique uh, set of circumstances. I'm so pleased to be sponsored by the people at BetterHelp.com. We have a link below that will take you to their website with a whole a team of licensed professionals that can assist you. Uh, and if that's something you need, I would strongly encourage you to go in that direction, get the help you need. Likewise, I've put together some therapeutic courses. It's, it's like having online classes that you can attend. And each course has multiple videos with written documents and guided questions. And, uh, and it's uh, meant to uh, help you in a therapeutic direction. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. This is me about those boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We have my webinars. We have our uh, Surviving Narcissism podcast. We have our website with multiple articles, many articles on there, uh, and with our books, um, many, uh, many resources for you to draw from. Narcissists are, in fact, users. They need to be in the superior position, which means that they want somebody that they can wipe their feet all, all over. And I'm hoping when you recognize what's going on, it's like, nope, I am not about to play that role. I have too much self-respect to allow somebody to, uh, to feel like they can get away with that with me. And in doing so, I'm hoping it positions you to be a person of DRC, dignity, respect, and civility. And that becomes your pathway towards your own inner peace.